this story begins, as I understand it, with something quite extraordinary. It was the preparation of an application to the registrar in Perth to establish an incorporated association, which my, my understanding is, is normally done for all sorts of not-for-profit yes. organizations. One associated with a trade union, and uh, you've uh, examined very carefully who, who wrote that by consulting handwriting experts, I understand. And, but I also understand that there has been some attempt by the staff of the Prime Minister to obtain retractions, some successful attempts to obtain retractions from outlets which have uh, committed the offence of saying that the document was actually prepared by Julia Gillard. Yes, Professor, I, I think you're right that uh, in our legal world, uh, incorporated associations are uh, typically used for the local Taekwondo club or, uh, and they have a special place in the league of corporate structures. The reporting arrangements are less burdensome than would be the case for a proprietary uh, entity or a public um, company and you need to satisfy the relevant uh, registrar or the commissioner in the various state jurisdictions under which they're registered. Um, that this association is being set up for legitimate purposes. So there's a form that you need to fill out and uh, questions that you need to answer and what have you and typically um, you'd engage a lawyer to uh, assist you. The case of the Australian Workers' Union Workplace Reform Association <laughs> is fascinating. I I've sought some legal views about this. One from a lawyer who I think would be the, from a practising perspective, the preeminent expert in uh, the role of various corporate structures as they are associated with unions in Australia. Uh, and that bloke is a fellow called Harry Nowicki. Harry was an industrial officer for uh, Norm, you know, the uh, BLF fellow, Norm yeah. Gallagher, yeah, uh, at the time, and, and got a law degree and was the uh, uh, retained by the BLF, the Builders Labourers uh, Federation, at the time when. Um, deregistration proceedings were being considered against that union. So Harry as a lawyer looked at what sort of corporate structures could be used to manage the assets of the BLF if it was deregistered, uh, its members equity or interest you know, in those uh, assets, how it could continue to operate. He looked at associations and what have you and, and found that no that's not the right vehicle, it's not the right structure. Uh, so he, Harry, has cast his mind um, his legal eye over this entity he was always um, bewildered by why the Australian Workers Union would set up an association and I'll quote him in fact I don't even need to quote him I'll just say it myself with the courage of my own convictions it was established as a sham it operated as a sham it had no purpose other than as a vehicle through which money could be funneled and that money went ultimately to the only two people within the union who knew about it, this association. That's Bruce Morton Wilson and his accomplice, Ralph Edwin Blewett. They're the only two people who were aware of the existence of this sham entity, the Australian Workers' Union Workplace Reform Association, with the exception of Wilson's lawyer, who was ostensibly acting for the union, for the Australian Workers' Union, uh, but clearly in this matter was uh, acting for Wilson personally as well. Uh, and that lady is uh, Julia Gillard. She was then a partner with the firm Slater and Gordon, uh, but she acted for Bruce Wilson and his accomplice Ralph Blewett in the establishment of this entity, the association. Uh, and then within weeks of it being set up, her firm, her partners, and she acted for Wilson and Blewett when they bought a house using money that clearly came from this association. Let me just run you through then sequentially uh, what happened. The Commissioner in Western Australia requires that upon application for the incorporation of an association of this sort, a form is filled out. And I have received uh, as a result of legal proceedings brought in the Federal uh, Industrial Relations Court, copies of various documents sought under subpoena, 
Uh, Bob Kernahan was one of the respondents in these legal proceedings. He was served with the documents. I'm satisfied as to the provenance uh, of these documents. They were, as I said, subpoenaed. They've been stamped. I believe that this is a copy of an original held by the Commissioner in Western Australia. This um, piece of handwriting here, the Australian Workers' Union Workplace Reform Association, when I first saw it, uh, gathered my attention. I then sought, uh, through public sources, uh, copies of handwriting, including this, a um, card handwritten by, I believe it to be a card handwritten by the Prime Minister, Julia Gillard. Um, I look at uh, the similarities and as a layman, there is sufficient for me to refer it to um, a handwriting expert. But uh, if you take scanned copies of these and place them together, um, you don't need to be too <laughs> expert in the science of uh, handwriting analysis to form a view as to whether or not they were written under the same hand by the same person. Now, if you just indulge me putting my glasses um, on, this Australian Workers' Union Workplace Reform Association had a range of rules to satisfy the Commissioner that it ought to be given the status of an incorporated association. And they included its objects. The objects of it were to contribute to the implementation of appropriate skills for workers, to promote and contribute to the development of unions and unionism, yada, 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 uh, to consult with union officials, to support and assist union officials, blah, blah, blah. Of the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, uh, objects of the association, it did none of them. It did none of the things that it said it would do. It then has one further restriction on it, and that is this, that the property and income of the association must be applied solely in accordance with the objects of the association, and no part of that income or property may be paid or distributed directly or indirectly to members except in the promotion of its objects. No part of its property or income may be paid or distributed to members. Well, within several weeks of Ms Gillard, as a lawyer, drafting the application, and a successful application, because the Corporate uh, Affairs Commissioner in Western Australia duly registered this association, within several weeks of it being registered and the money starting to flow in, Mr Wilson uh, signed a contract for the purchase of a house in Fitzroy in Victoria. Um, Ms Gillard's firm acted for him and his accomplice Ralph Edwin Blewett in the purchase of the house and sought from them a cheque to complete the purchase. You know on settlement the, your lawyer says well, well we can do the conveyancing but we need a further X amount. It was $67,000 odd uh, dollars was required on settlement and uh, Ms Gillard's firm wrote to her boyfriend, Mr Wilson, and Mr Blewett and said, we need the 67 to complete the sale. We'll need a bank cheque, which is the ordinary way of conducting this. If you ever bought a house, usually your lawyer will say, we need a bank cheque. Those buggers didn't even take the intermediate step of getting a bank cheque. They wrote a cheque out on the cheque book, which I've got a copy of the cheque in my bag. I'll give you a copy of it. Uh, which said on the bottom, Australian Workers' Union Workplace Reform Association. 67 grand came out of that account. The deposit had been paid on the purchase of the house within days of a cheque for $25,000 being drawn, on a cash cheque on that uh, uh, account. As Ian Cambridge, who's now a judicial officer uh, with Fair Work Australia, with the old Industrial Relations Commission, as he swore in an affidavit at the time of the discovery of uh, the embezzlement, he said, you know, I am unable to understand how Slater and Gordon could have acted for this pair in the purchase of real property with money that was clearly taken from the union without it, Slater and Gordon, recording the interest of the union. And I'd share his view, I too, and I am unable to understand how Slater and Gordon could have done that. How uh, a partner in the firm, albeit a uh, self-professed 
young and naive partner, but how a partner in a law firm, properly instructed in the practice of industrial relations law, could have failed to see the conflict of interest in acting for somebody with whom she was in a sexual relationship, her boyfriend, in the purchase by him of a house with money that clearly came from somebody, an, an entity that was her client, the uh, Australian Workers' Union. Um, and the fact that she has never had to answer publicly direct questions about her role in setting this entity up or in buying, acting for the boyfriend in the purchase by him and his mate uh, of a house with money that, as Anne Cambridge said, clearly came from the union. The fact she's never had to answer public questions about that, I think, is a reflection on the competence or pusillanimity of Australia's media. So often I've heard this disgraceful statement from her repeated as if it is some sort of received almost biblical wisdom. I did nothing wrong. I've answered this. It's on the public record. No ma'am, with great respect that's not true. You have not answered. I put to you quite specific questions about your role in this entity and you have not answered them. And I think in the interests of us having a public record that is complete and without contradiction you ought to, you owe it to the members of that union to answer the question, mine plus Ian Cambridge's, where he says he's unable to understand how you did it. Answer it, how? <laughs> how did you? How could you have acted for your boyfriend in those circumstances? How could you have seen that money come from a union account to buy a house for him? And how could you, upon the discovery of his other frauds in Melbourne, when you had a duty to act for the union and its members, how could you have failed to bring this matter to the investigator's attention? Because this matter, the Perth Association, was not discovered until after the discovery of the Melbourne uh, frauds, Melbourne-based frauds, uh, that are alleged against Mr Wilson. Now, I say alleged against him because these matters were not brought to prosecution and they were not brought to prosecution for want of evidence in relation to the ownership of the money. And that brings us back to this first point about Thompson and Williamson and the HSU. It's easy for a union official to say, well, I'm the boss of the union. I make the calls around here. And I'm not going to give you, police, a statement that implicates this particular fellow in the union. We'll deal with this in-house. Thank you very much. And that, to me, is disgraceful.